Hello, my friend. This is Greg Hennett bringing you more water from the rock. Today's message is titled, Satan's Biggest Weapon. Satan's most powerful weapon is not a guided missile or a million-man army. It's not a nuclear attack submarine or a neutron bomb. It's not an electromagnetic pulse device, EMP as it's called, or another weapon of mass destruction. No, he uses something far more powerful, yet to us it seems much less powerful. What is it? A lie. A simple, maliciously twisted, false statement planted in the minds of unsuspecting sinners or unwise Christians. And what is the effect of the lie? It deceives. It causes its victims to believe something that is not true or not accurate and sometimes not even real, all to further the liar's nefarious purpose. Once deceived, the liar's victims are easily led to actions that harm themselves or others, causing loss and grief and regret and the defeat of God's good will and plan. And Satan celebrates. How does he use his weapon? Well, sometimes through intentional liars, people who willfully conceive untruths and half-truths and deliberately sow them often subtly in quiet conversations, to harm the innocent. Or, lies may come through the news media. My goodness, our news media is filled with lies today in America. Or the Internet. The Internet has wonderful sources of truth and many dark places where the truth is not there. And falsehood is promoted, great wickedness and evil. At other times, Satan uses bold public speakers as his mouthpiece, to spew craftily worded falsehoods that deceive and mislead the world's easily impressionable billions and the church's gullible millions. A great example would be Dr. Anthony Fauci, who lied to us and to the whole world about the source of the COVID-19 virus in 2020. He knew exactly where it came from before this whole situation blew up. He knew it was from the Wuhan Virology Lab. It was notoriously unsafe and unsecure. And he had financed the engineering of viruses there to make them more deadly and more contagious for some time, for years. So he knew exactly where the virus came from, but did not tell us for a long, long time, years. The Psalms issue many clear, strong warnings about liars and their lies. Deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips and from a deceitful tongue. Psalm 120, verse 2. This is a recurring theme prayer in the Psalms. Could it be, my friend, that God intentionally designed this inspired book of comfort, the Psalms, to impart inspiring comfort to us, especially when Satan's slew of slanderers have left us low and uninspired. Jesus also warned us about Satan's worst weapon. Quote, The devil, there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, or of his own character. For he is a liar, and the father or originator of it. End quote. John 8 44. So every lie Satan inspires arises from his own twisted nature and depraved heart. As the father of lying, he births, trains, and raises up little liars, bearing his harmful, hateful character image. And he has, quote, no truth, end quote, in him, which offers us a hint as to what God's biggest weapon is. God's most powerful weapon is truth. Truth takes three broad forms. First, biblical truth. This speaks to all spiritual matters, moral matters, and doctrinal matters. Then there's factual truth, which speaks to all natural, worldly, or judicial matters. And finally, there's the truth of honesty, or our personal integrity, truthfulness, 
or faithfulness and our openness to all genuine truth. Wherever, whenever, and through whomever Satan shoots his arrows of falsehood at the target of human hearts, God, in time, raises advocates who respond by shooting truth arrows, spoken in love, but without any deviation from the full, frank truth. Ultimately, every devilish arrow will be split right down the middle by a divine arrow of truth that thoroughly dispels the deception, vilifies the deceivers, and liberates the deceived. But often grave damage, loss, and grief have already taken a terrible, sometimes irreparable, toll. So, my friend, we must quickly recognize lies and expose them before people are harmed. For this, we must know the signs of falsehood. What happens when falsehood has been sown and is having effect in people's lives? What are the, what are the telltale signs of it? Well, lies produce unrest, confusion, agitation, and then strife. And then this strife causes division and destruction. Truth, on the other hand, produces insight, understanding, and clarification, and reconciliation, peace, unity, and progress, and this leads to success. We also know the origin of lying. The Bible reveals that before time, Satan, then called Lucifer, light bearer, fathered lies by slandering God in heaven. As a result, one-third of God's angels believed Satan, rebelled, and were condemned with him to ultimately suffer eternal punishment in the lake of fire without opportunity of redemption. But for the moment, the liar was still on the loose. And so in Eden, Satan, now indwelling the serpent, lied to Eve by misrepresenting God's intentions behind his command for Adam and Eve to not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Consequently, first Eve, then Adam, the federal head of the human race, believed the lie, acted on it, and immediately died. That is, lost vital touch with God becoming mortal, and then fathering a humanity, possessing a tragic innate preference for falsehood over truth, and a predisposition to doubt and disobey God. So the lying continued now in the human race. Before the flood, Satan convinced Noah's peers that Noah was deceived and his warnings of an unprecedented worldwide flood were ridiculously false. As a result, the world population disbelieved Noah and was utterly destroyed, except for eight souls, forcing humanity to begin again through Noah after the flood. In ancient times, Satan lied to pagan peoples. He convinced them that the idols they made had made them and millions lived in darkness and died without redemption. In Israel, Satan prompted King Saul to slander David by claiming David and Jonathan were conspiring to kill him, which was precisely the opposite of the truth. This forced David to flee to the wilderness and live a long, dark decade filled with danger, loss, and grief until Saul's lies finally were exposed. In Jesus' day, Satan inspired the envious Jewish religious leaders to claim that Jesus was a dangerous deceiver, filled with not divine but diabolical powers. Mark 3.22 tells us their opinion. He had a demon, a chief demon, And by this chief demon he expelled other demons, they claimed. Poisoned by this lie, thousands of Jews turned from Jesus, who would otherwise have turned to him and been saved. Throughout church history, lying has continued. Pope Urban II promised Europeans automatic salvation 
if they fought under the banner of the Crusades. Pope Leo slandered Martin Luther, whose illuminating biblical studies had exposed many dark papal sins and Catholic errors. Consequently, many thousands of medieval Christians deceived, rejected the Reformation, and all the life-giving spiritual light and truths it offered, and they lived the rest of their lives in spiritual darkness, spiritually dead and lost. Today, American politics abundantly exemplifies the father of lies nefarious works. Satan inspires, for instance, one criminally guilty politician to brand his political rival as a lawbreaker, and the public quietly swallows the liar's slander-tainted pills and, deceived, subsequently wonders why our culture and nation are so sick and so confused. Current social issues are also fertile fields for Satan's seeds of falsehood. Only a generation ago, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. led us to conclude a man's character, not his skin, is what really counts. But Satan has birthed a pseudo-intellectual line today, critical race theory. Oh, it's been with us for about four decades in academia, and now it's come to the public attention. And critical race theory asserts just the opposite of King's discovery. It says that our skin, not our character, makes us villains or victims, oppressors or oppressed. What a stupid theory. Deceived CRT's devotees are busily sowing injustice in the name of social justice and creating a harvest of havoc. The news media has a new manager, the father of lies. Tragically, the American press, long dedicated to unbiased, factual, dispassionate reporting, is now dedicated to biased, unfactual, passionate distortions. Journalists used to make their names exposing lies to establish the truth. Now, they attack the truth and promote lies and support liars while posing as legitimate journalists. And the people love to have it so. Education is yet another battlefield between truth and falsehood. Lucifer has shed new light on our poor, ignorant minds. Gender is not determined by our sexual anatomy, but by how we identify. For thousands of years, we were simply too ignorant to see all this, of course. And so now, thousands of innocent children, indoctrinated by guilty adults pushing these false claims, have changed their names they're mutilating their bodies, and unless God's grace intervenes, they are ruining their lives. Religious doctrinal positions are even more vital, since religious doctrine affects not just the present, but eternity. Satan has an entire staff of demons dedicated to contriving and promoting lies, claiming, for instance, man needs no divine redeemer, or there is no God, or there is no afterlife, or good works and traditional rituals will save our souls, or there are other gods beside Yahweh, or there are other saviors beside Jesus, or God's love will save everyone in the end, and many other damning lies. These religious falsehoods have deceived and taken to perdition millions whom God passionately desired to take to paradise. And the lying, it goes on. It will climax in the tribulation period. Based on his satanically empowered resuscitation from a deadly wound, Antichrist will claim he is God incarnate and the Jewish Messiah. And the world deluded by this false miracle, by this satanic power, will wander after the beast, take his mark, worship his image, and follow him all the long way to Armageddon and to eternal judgment. 
But here is the more immediately important point, my friend. Recognizing which lies Satan has used in the past to mislead others, or is using now to mislead others, that won't help us. What we need is to discern the lies he is trying to use against us right now. Cleverly, he sometimes prompts lying thoughts in the first person, hoping to disguise them as merely our own thoughts. For instance, he prompted this thought in David's heart. Quote, David said in his heart, I shall now perish one day by the hand of Saul. End quote. 1 Samuel 27, verse 1. This one single satanic lie prompted David to stop believing God would make him king of Israel, as Samuel had prophesied and David had believed for such a long time, and discouraged, he moved to Philistia, which was enemy ground, and he stayed there for 16 months of confusion and ultimately the Ziklag disaster. Satan suggests lies to our minds also, to move us to sin, to disobey God's word, or to depart from his guidance or call on our life. He may say to us such things as, others are sinning and prospering, so a little sin won't bother me. Or, the Bible isn't entirely true, is it? Or, God will never fulfill his promise to me. Or, I just can't overcome this test of faith, or of patience, or of endurance, or of love. Or, my past sins, they are so great, God would never use me in the ministry. Or, you know, I'm convinced now I just married the wrong person. Or, my children or my parents, they're just too worldly, too sinful for intercessory prayer to make any difference. Or, I'll never find a soulmate. Or, I'm just too young or I'm too old to help build God's kingdom. Satan also suggests lies through friends family members, neighbors, and heretical preachers. If you, my friend, have fallen into discouragement or confusion and unrest, prayerfully examine yourself to discover the lie or lies that you have bought into. And then recall, believe, speak, and obey God's biblical truth, the truth that applies to the matter before you. That's how you faithfully fight your fight against falsehood and win with truth. This relentless war between lies and truth continues unabated. Down the ages, when wars have come, humans have armed themselves. Today, many Christians are arming themselves with pistols, rifles, and ammunition. Yet God is still trying to arm us another, higher way, His way. He said His people are destroyed because they lack not arms, but knowledge, specifically knowledge of God and His ways and His will. Hosea 4, 6. This is the truth that Hosea speaks of, the truth about God. So arm yourself with truth. Seek the truth that is biblical and factual truths with an open mind and don't stop your seeking until you're sure you have got the truth. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you discern the truth and to judge issues correctly in this confusing atmosphere we live in today. With His omniscient help you will see through every lie whether personal or political, social, or ideological, or religious, and you will bind that lie before it binds you. God will confirm that you have discovered his truth by giving you a strong, sustained peace, peace like a river, the wonderful witness of the Holy Spirit. And hold that truth tightly. The father of lies will use half-truths and twisted truths to try to dissuade and shift you 
from the full truth. Or he may try to destroy you with slander. But this will just prompt Jesus to pour in more of his sweet, strong inner blessing. Quote, Blessed are ye, said Jesus, when men shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Great is your reward in heaven. End quote. Matthew 5, verse 12. Then, my friend, share the truth. Tell any deceived but open-minded person the biblical truth or the natural facts pertaining to the issue at hand, knowing that the truth will release them from falsehood's deceptive, destructive control. Knowing that the liar would flood our lives with falsehoods, the living truth, Jesus, spoke this truth in the word of truth to instruct the people of truth. Quote, You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. End quote. John 8.32 in the English Standard Version. There is our instruction. So seek, hold, and share the truth. That's our weapon. And it's much bigger than Satan's biggest weapon. Well, that's all for today, my friend. For more information about my books, courses, teaching videos, and devotional messages, please visit us at greghennettministries.org. That is G-R-E-G-H-I-N-N-A-N-T ministries.org. And also at Greg Hennett on YouTube and Facebook. And may Jesus richly bless you. Maranatha, he comes.